In the near future, science will make super smart robots called surrogate that replace humans in everyday life. These robots are linked to the real human brain using neuropathic signals in a stim chair. People let their surrogates do their jobs while they chill at home. It was so good that crime rates went down and people could even look however they wanted without surgery or exercise. Dr. Lionel Cantor made surrogates for disabled people so they could have a normal life. After three years, the army started using these robots. More and more people wanted surrogates and soon they were available for everyone. Years passed and it became a trend, but not everyone was happy. Some people thought humans should live their own lives. They created surrogate-free zones in the US and called themselves Dreads, led by a guy named The Prophet. Hello, welcome back to I Am Movies. Today, we're diving into the 2011 sci-fi movie known as Surrogate. But before we jump into the details, make sure to show us some love by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Now, let's get right into it. The movie starts with a young guy named Jared. He's talking on the phone, saying he doesn't want to go to the opera. Instead, he asks the driver to take him to a club. At the club, Jared joins the crowd, dances, and finds a girl to hang out with. While they're kissing, a guy shows up and reaches into his bag, and Jared tells him to go away. Suddenly, there's a spark of bright light, and the guy speeds off on a motorcycle, causing a car to crash. We see a messed up robot in the wreckage. FBI agents Jennifer and her partner Tom show up at the crash site. They find a damaged male surrogate, and a female one. The police officer says the male surrogate isn't registered, and the female surrogate belongs to someone, but no reports are filed. Both surrogates have their eyes blown up, and Tom notices the memory chip in the male surrogate is fried. Tom and Jennifer visit the residence of the person in charge of the female surrogate. He is discovered dead with a bleeding nose. Before the stream turns off, Tom scans the last thing the robot sees and notices the male surrogate's eyes burning and cracking. Later, Tom goes home walks into a closet and parks itself, revealing that he's also a surrogate. The real Tom gets up from the stim chair and looks at his surrogate. He leaves his room and goes into a kid's room, where he sees a photo of him, his wife, and a child. Meanwhile, he goes to the living room and meets his wife Maggie, who's using her surrogate. Tom suggests they take a real vacation alone, but Maggie thinks they should bring their surrogates. Tom wants a break from the surrogate life. He points out that they haven't been truly together for a while. Maggie seems upset, saying they're together every day, but Tom thinks it's their surrogates spending time, not them. Maggie insists that it's better this way. Meanwhile, in a college dorm in San Diego, two guys find their friend Jared dead. FBI supervisor Andrew briefs the station about the strange discoveries. He wants to keep the information about the messed up surrogates, a secret to avoid causing panic. Tom and Jennifer check footage from the surrogates and spot someone with a weapon. Tom tells Andrew that this case might involve a murder. A surprise call comes in for the agents from Jared's father, Lionel Cantor, the original creator of surrogates. The news reveals that Dr. Cantor was ousted from his own company VSI seven years ago. Jennifer and Tom visit Dr. Cantor, encountering one of his surrogates resembling Jared. Cantor confesses that he encouraged Jared to use his surrogates to spend time together. Jennifer reminds him that it's a felony to use a surrogate registered to someone else. Tom, who also lost his son, asks if Dr. Cantor has any idea why someone would want to harm Jared, or him. Dr. Cantor suggests that if they were after him, he might be responsible for his son's death. The surrogate shuts down as Dr. Cantor breaks down in tears. Jennifer and Tom then head to the VSI office and meet the representative from corporate relations. They press for answers on how a surrogate's head could explode, but legal reps avoid giving a clear response. Frustrated, Tom and Jennifer leave the meeting and go to the engineering department. There, they meet an engineer, who explains that for an ID chip to get so damaged, every circuit must fire off at once. He mentions seeing a similar situation with soldiers returning from service but with optics and only missing chips. He finds these soldiers have no damage to their bodies, but no ID chips. Jennifer and Tom visit a military camp, observing surrogate soldiers engaged in a battlefield conflict. Witnessing a surrogate getting shot and destroyed, they notice the operator quickly hopping into a different surrogate. The agents consult Colonel Brendan, asking if a weapon is being developed to destroy surrogates. He denies it, claiming they routinely remove motherboards and optics for analysis. Back at the FBI office, Jennifer uncovers the identity of the shooter, Miles Strickland, who's listed as a criminal in the system, but has somehow evaded punishment, making her suspect an inside protector. They then visit the monitoring department, where a non-surrogate technician, Bobby, reveals Miles' location. Tom heads to meet the pursuit team, while Jennifer stays with Bobby to monitor Miles. Bobby shares that finding Miles was easy with access to all surrogates' feeds in the city. An alarm goes off, revealing a man harming a woman. 
Bobby urgently calls it in and requests an immediate shutdown of the assailant's surrogate. Jennifer is shocked to discover surrogates can be remotely shut down and questions the legality. Bobby dismisses her concerns, claiming the police are the good guys, but Jennifer worries about the software falling into the wrong hands. Later, we see Miles speeding his motorcycle through the streets, and police cars are pursuing him closely. He weaves through traffic with such ability that he barely misses approaching vehicles. In a helicopter, Tom pursues Miles, ignoring warnings of restricted airspace. Miles is then cornered by the cops, but he uses a weapon that destroys all surrogate cops. Tom watches from above as Miles aims at the helicopter. Tom disconnects just in time, avoiding the weapon's blast. He reconnects after the helicopter crashes, losing a limb. Despite the injury, Tom grabs his gun and chases Miles, who realizes the weapon is malfunctioning. Tom catches up, demanding the bag, but they are in a surrogacy-free camp surrounded by dreads and get shot at. In pain, Tom crawls out of his station. Maggie discovers Tom in agony and calls an ambulance. Later, we see the Prophet visit Miles and ask who gave him the weapon, but Miles denies knowing. On the news, the Prophet mentions that surrogates have declared war by entering their territory. In the hospital, Tom wakes up, and Andrew tells him he's lucky to be alive. Tom is suspended from duty, and Andrew takes over the case. Tom won't get a new surrogate until after the investigation. Leaving the hospital, he meets Jennifer and feels a bit anxious around people for the first time in a while. Tom goes back to where his surrogate was destroyed. He then discovers that Miles is already dead and watches his body being cremated. After that, he asks to speak with the Prophet, but instead beaten down, he tells the Prophet he needs to get the weapon back. But the Prophet sarcastically answers to give it if he finds it, and then kicks him out of their territory before examining the weapon. On his way home, Tom gets a ride from one of Dr. Cantor's surrogates. Tom shares that he lost his son in a car accident. Although Tom reassures Dr. Cantor that the man who killed Jared is now dead, Dr. Cantor insists the technology is beyond what the dreads could do. He tells Tom to focus on where the weapon came from. When Tom gets home, he finds a bunch of surrogates partying with Maggie. Tom tries to fight with them, but they mock him for being weak. As he leaves, Maggie follows and asks what he wants. Tom says he wants his real wife and leaves. Maggie goes into her room and disconnects, and the real Maggie starts crying. Tom goes to the FBI headquarters to investigate VSI. Meanwhile, in the shadows, a mysterious figure arrives at Jennifer's house, killing her and transferring the surrogate operator to someone else. Jennifer's surrogate steps out of the dock. Tom goes to see Colonel Brendan and inquires about the weapon. Brendan reveals it's an overload device designed to end battles with one shot, releasing a software virus to disable the surrogate immediately. Unfortunately, they didn't know it would also kill the operator. Tom discloses that the Prophet has one of these weapons, shocking Brendan. Brendan vows to handle the situation. The Prophet entrusts the weapon to two men, instructing them to deliver it to Agent Jennifer. Meanwhile, Andrew catches Jennifer snooping in payroll files and redirects her to the correct area. Tom visits Maggie's surrogate at work, apologizing for the previous night. He professes his love but confesses he can't sleep because of thoughts about his son. Maggie, now identified as a surrogate, insists this is who she is now, and disconnects, reaching for her medicines. Simultaneously, the military launches an invasion of the Dread Zone to retrieve the weapon. Soldiers pour out of helicopters, and the Dreads rush to hide. A firefight ensues, with the Prophet and his henchmen facing off against the military. The Prophet is shot, revealing himself as a surrogate, and Dr. Cantor is unveiled as the Prophet's operator. Tom meets who he believes is Jennifer's surrogate, discovering that Miles is working with Andrew. Andrew had hired Miles to assassinate Dr. Cantor, leading to Jared's accidental death. After that, Tom confronts Andrew at the station, theorizing that VSI provided the weapon and hiring Miles to kill Dr. Cantor. When Andrew threatens to call in security, Tom stabs Andrew's surrogate, shorting it out, hacks into Andrew's computer and downloads incriminating files. He then meets Jennifer's surrogate and they drive away. Examining the files, Tom concludes that Dr. Cantor funds the anti-surrogacy movement, unaware that Dr. Cantor might have started it. Discovering codes to activate the weapon, Jennifer calls the station, revealing Tom's location. Tom confused by the situation, a truck collides with them, sending their car flying. Jennifer walks away with the weapon, but Tom decides to chase her, attempting to run her over. They race through busy streets, smashing into surrogates and other cars. Eventually, Tom crashes into a store window, and Jennifer escapes. To evade the FBI agents on his tail, Tom hides, steals a car, and contacts Bobby. He orders Bobby to shut down Jennifer's surrogate, but Jennifer beats him to it. Bobby informs Tom that Jennifer is attempting to tap into the entire surrogate network. Meanwhile, Andrew confronts Jennifer on the monitoring level. 
but Dr. Cantor reveals he's controlling Jennifer's surrogate. Andrew argues with Dr. Cantor, explaining that surrogates are a gift to the world and that destroying them would set humanity back. Dr. Cantor, seeking revenge for Jared's death, fires the weapon at Andrew, destroying his surrogate's computer. Tom reaches Dr. Cantor's home, demanding to speak with the real Dr. Cantor. He forces his way in while Jennifer's surrogate initiates a virus upload into all surrogates, intending to kill everyone using them. Tom discovers a hidden door, entering Dr. Cantor's chamber, where he finds various surrogates, including the Prophet and Jennifer's killer. Dr. Cantor, sitting in a wheelchair, points a gun at Tom, questioning if he misses being human. He argues that people inside surrogates are already dead, and that killing them would be a favor to humanity. Dr. Cantor sees surrogacy as a perversion and a sick addiction. As a warning announces the completed virus upload, Dr. Cantor swallows a cyanide pill, taking his own life. Tom removes Dr. Cantor from the stim chair and logs into Jennifer's surrogate. He asks Bobby for help in stopping the virus transmission, succeeding with less than a second to spare. While the operators are safe, the virus remains active, threatening to destroy surrogates. Bobby guides Tom on how to prevent the destruction, and a team of operatives enters the facility. However, just as Tom is about to terminate the virus, he decides to let it go. At that moment, an operative shoots Jennifer's surrogate. The virus becomes active, causing all surrogates to suddenly go lifeless. Streets and buildings are filled with deactivated surrogates. Tom steps out, witnessing the successful disabling of all surrogates. People emerge from their homes, disoriented and confused, some stepping outside for the first time in a while. Returning home, Tom shares an emotional moment with Maggie in her real form. The film concludes with an aerial view of collapsed surrogates, accompanied by news reports of downed surrogates worldwide. People are now on their own again, and the movie ends here. If you'd like to see us recap any other movies or topics you have in mind, just drop a comment and let us know. And don't forget to hit the like button, share this recap, and subscribe to stay updated for the next one. Until next time.